Have you ever found yourself endlessly scrolling through TikTok, stumbling upon those cool fan edits while thinking, what if I could create edits like these for my favorite TV show? So we went ahead, downloaded After Effects, added all the necessary plugins and opened it up, only to be met by a confusing screen not knowing where to start. Well, don't worry, because I was at the exact same place, and today I will be showing you how you can make the best fan edit ever using After Effects. So when you first open up After Effects, it's probably going to look something like this. And what you want to do from here on, you're going to click on New Composition, which should open up this little extra window. Now here, the most important setting is going to be your resolution. Now for me personally, I always like to use this resolution, which is 1170 by 1560. Now what composition size is best for you is going to be depending on what type of edit you want to do. Now because I want to post my edits on TikTok, I'm going to go for a vertical view. But if you want to upload yours to YouTube, you will probably want to go for a horizontal view like this. A good resolution for that type of edit is going to be 1920 by 1080. So once you've found your resolution, we're going to go ahead down to the duration of our edit. In my case, I don't want to make my edit too long. I've chosen a sound that's approximately approximately 20 seconds long so I'm just gonna put it up to 20 seconds and last but not least is gonna be our frame rate I like to edit in 60 FPS and you're gonna want to do the same note that you can also change these settings anytime later once you've adjusted all the settings that I gave you go ahead and press ok and once you're facing this screen this is where most people start to struggle but don't worry I'm gonna guide you through it so the first thing we need to add is the intro and the sound where you get these from doesn't really matter you can search sounds on YouTube and just choose whatever you like but if you want to get high quality scenes which is probably gonna be the most important part of your edit i suggest you to find a good scene pack account on instagram there's loads i also own one of these scene pack accounts so if you don't want to miss out on getting the best scenes make sure to check the link in the description so once you've added your intro and your sound to the timeline make sure to go ahead right click onto your sound go to keyframe assistant and hit convert audio into keyframes because the first thing that we're going to do is marking our beat drop so we can later on see where our beat changes and where we have to change the scenes as well and in order to do that we're now going to click onto the newly created layer that's called audio amplitude and while having it selected press u on our keyboard this should bring up all these keyframes and we're going to go ahead select both channels and open the graph editor by clicking this little icon and now as you can see there's lots of spikes in the graph and every time where you see a spike for example here you know that the beat is dropping so now what we want to do is to go to that place and time where the beat drops which is right here you can always zoom in a bit to see it more clear and we're going to go ahead to the right and by clicking this icon we're going to create a new marker now go ahead and create a marker everywhere where you can see that your beat drops so it's more easy to recognize them later on so once you've marked all the beats your timeline should look something like this and we can now go ahead close the graph editor again and delete the layer now as you can see we have loads of markers and now every time where there's a marker we know that our beat drops so of course next we're going to have to add some footage so we can change the scenery every time our beat drops as i said you can get good footage from scene accounts on Instagram but it's totally up to you from where you get your footage. Now the best and most easy way to search out certain clips from a long scene pack is going to be adding your scene pack to your timeline then double clicking onto it and as you can see you have this little extra timeline below your clip right here and you can now go ahead and drag this marker throughout the whole scene pack and every time you find a clip that you like you can go ahead and click this little bracket and it's automatically going to cut to that place in time. Now on your main timeline we're going to go ahead to the next marker by right clicking and selecting go to the marker and cut our clip right here by pressing on Control, shift and D. Now you isolated this clip and if you now double click onto the long part again you can do the same process until you find all your clips. And always make sure to select good clips where you can see the character fully so that your viewers know what you're editing. Now once you search all the clips that you want to use for your edit you're going to face this problem because as you can see some of the clips are not fully centered meaning that his face is not fully visible in the shot. And now to adjust that you're going to want to click on the clip that you want to change press P on your keyboard to bring up the positioning property and as you can see you have two individual values now. If you increase the value on the left which is the x value you're going to change it horizontally and if you increase the value on the right you're going to change the positioning vertically now in my case i only want to center it horizontally so i'm going to increase the x value till it fits my expectations do this for every clip that you have to adjust this might not always be the case but often you're going to have to do it manually now once you've adjusted all your clips to the center of the screen we're now going to select all of them in order to change the settings of them and to do that we're going to click the first clip scroll all the way up to the last one and while pressing shift click that one as well as you can see all your clips are now selected and the setting that we want to change is first of all going to be the audio so click on this little audio sign to disable the audio for these clips now next we're going to enable frame blending which is this little window right here as you can see and we're going to click it twice till it looks like this now also i would suggest you to enable motion blur this is just going to make your edit overall smoother because most scene packs are going to be in 24 fps and because as you remember earlier we changed the composition frame rate to 60 so enabling frame blending is just going to adjust the frame rate of the clips to our composition now once that's done we're now going to pre-compose each and every single layer that we have and to do that just select the layer that we want to pre-compose 
Compose, click on it. You can either right click, go to Pre-Compose, then this window should open and then select the bottom option, enable this check mark and disable this one. Press OK. And now you have your pre-composition or you can just go ahead, click it and press Control, Shift and C at your keyboard and it's going to do the same thing. Press OK and do this for all the clips. Now once your timeline looks like this, we're going to go ahead and add our first effect. Now always the first thing that we're going to add is Twixter. With Twixter, you can adjust the speed that your edit is playing in using percentage. What that means is we're basically going to add a slow-mo using it. So to add Twixter to your clip, go ahead, select the clip that you want to put it on, open the effects and presets panel and search for Twixter. Now these three options should come up and we're going to select the normal Twixter and drag it onto our clip. Now if you have the problem that for you the Twixter effect doesn't come up when you search it or there's just a massive red X once you've applied it, make sure to join my Discord, the link's in the description. I have all the plugins on there, you can download them from my links. Now there's a few settings where you're going to have to adjust when adding Twixter, which is going to be at the start, we're going to change the input frame rate to the frame rate of our clip. Now to find out what frame rate your clip is in, open the project settings, click onto your scene pack and it should show right here. As you can see, mine's in 23.976 FPS. So I'm going to go back into the effects control panel and change it from 29 to 23.976. Next, we're going to change the image prep from none to contrast slash edge enhance. Put the motion sensitivity from 70 up to 100. And now we're going to make sure that we're at the first frame of our clip and hit the little stopwatch next to the speed percentage. Leave it at 100. What that does, it basically just creates a keyframe. So now we can zoom in a bit. Press U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes and you can see this little keyframe on your timeline. Now zoom a bit more in. We're gonna go ahead one frame and change the value from 100 up to 200. Go approximately to the middle of your clip and change the value from 200 down to 40. Now again, we're gonna go to the end and set a keyframe for the value at 200 again. Now it should look something like this, but we're now gonna add a graph to make it look way smoother. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to select all the keyframes that we just created, right click on them, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now, when they're all selected, you can open the graph editor like we did before. And now it should show this graph. Now, once you click on it, you can go ahead and adjust it using this yellow handles. Now just copy my graph and make it look something like this. Now go ahead, exit the graph editor again, zoom out and play your clip. So now you successfully created your own Twixter preset. And as you might have guessed, we're now going to go ahead, copy it and apply it to every other layer so that we have the slow-mo effect on every clip that we use. And to do that, go ahead, select all the keyframes, head to the right top, click on the Twixter and press Ctrl and C. This basically just copies it. Go to the beginning of your next clip and press Ctrl and V. Now, as you can see, the screen turns black, but to fix that, we're going to go ahead to our Twixter settings and under source control, change the color source from the layer that we had before which is 14 to the current one which is going to be 13 you can see the layer's name at the left right here now also select the layer press u to bring up the keyframes zoom in a bit and as you can see the keyframe doesn't match the length of the clip so we're going to go ahead select all of them and while pressing down alt drag them till they fit now do this step for every layer so that you have your slow-mo effect not only on one but all the clips that you want to use now once you've added the twixer to all the clips you added will already look way better and now we want to bring some more movement in it so we're going to add some zoom outs now for this we're going to use the s underscore blur more curve effect so go ahead open your effects and presets panel again and search for s underscore blur more curves again if this effect doesn't show up for you make sure to check out the link in the description because you can join my discord server and just download all the plugins for free there now drag it onto your clip and we're just going to leave the settings how they are and set a keyframe for the z distance effect and we're going to put the value from 1 down to 0 0.75 now go to the very end of your clip and set the keyframe from 0 0.75 up to 1 press you on your keyboard and as you can see you now have these new two keyframes but like before we're going to add some graphs to make it look even smaller Mover. So go ahead, select both of the keyframes, right click onto them, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now open the graph editor and just copy what I'm doing. Once your graph looks something like this, go ahead, close the graph editor again. And now you successfully also made your first zooming out preset. So like before, we're going to go ahead and apply it into every clip. To do that, just go ahead again, select both the keyframes, head to the left, click on the effect, press Ctrl and C, copy it, go on to the next layer, go to the very first frame of it and press Ctrl and B to paste it onto the clip. And as you can see, the keyframes don't match. So we're going to go ahead, select them again. And while pressing Alt, drag them till they fit to the end of the clip. Now go ahead and repeat the step for every clip that you have. And now once we've added all the effects to our clips, we're now now gonna go ahead and dedicate our work towards the intro. I already said this in loads of other tutorials that I made, the intro is almost the most important part of your edit because when a viewer watches your edit, they're gonna first look at the intro and decide whether they're gonna watch the edit or not. So I will always suggest you to put the most effort into the intro. And in my case, this is the clip that I selected for my intro. And Gene, we we'll wanna change before we go out. So I'm going to now add a text and to add a text, we're going to head to the top row and select this little T icon. Now just click onto your composition and type what your character says. 
Now, as you can see, this does not look good at all. The color doesn't match, the text is too big, and I don't like the font. And now to adjust our text settings, we're gonna go ahead, select all of our text that we just created. And first of all, I wanna change the color to white. So I'm gonna go ahead, select this little blue icon, the square, and it's gonna open this window. As you can see, you can select from all colors that you want right here, but for me, it's gonna be white. So I'm gonna select white and press okay. Now next, I wanna change the font. Now for this edit, I'm gonna choose Arial Bold, but there's loads of different fonts that you can download for free and select the one that fits your liking the best. Now, last but not least, you can see the text doesn't fit into our frame. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the setting to make it a bit smaller and actually fit. Now, obviously, I want mine to be in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead, open the align panel and click the center button. So to align it horizontally. Now, because our text still looks kind of mid, we're going to add some effects like a glow and a drop shadow to make it a bit more active. So we're going to go ahead, open our effects and presets panel and search for deep glow. Drag it onto your clip. And again, if this plugin does not show up for you, make sure to join my Discord and get it from there. Now, for the settings, first of all, we're going to click to the check mark that says required for text otherwise there's going to be a black bar covering our text next i'm going to put the radius up to 350 and the exposure from 1 down to 0.6 now the threshold i'm going to up from 50 up to 100 same for the threshold smooth and the rest i'm just going to leave now also i want to add a drop shadow so go ahead search for drop shadow drag it onto your clip and i'll put the opacity from 50 up to 100 and the distance from 5 to 10 and the softness from 0 to 8 now as you can see your text already looks way better but of course we're going to have to add some animations because we don't want it to appearing out of nowhere but before we add our animation we still have one more sentence that's going to be spoken by my character so i'm going to go ahead and cut the text layer right when he starts the second sentence which in my case is going to be at this point i want to change before so i'm going to press ctrl shift and d on my keyboard at the same time and it's going to cut our text layer now because in this sentence he uses different words than before obviously we're going to have to change our text and to do that we're going to double click on our text and just fill in the words that he's speaking now now i added two more text layers to fit what my characters are saying and now because the only blank white text is going to look a bit boring we're going to bring some color into it and change certain words for example in this sentence i think the word change pretty much points out so i'm gonna go ahead select it by double clicking onto it open the character panel and adjust the color to red press okay and i'm also gonna adjust the size and make it a bit bigger so it stands out more now as you can see this work cuts into the other line that we have so i'm gonna go ahead select it and increase the leading a bit so it goes down and creates more space in between the lines as i said before our text is still appearing out of nowhere and to fix that we're now gonna add a fancy text animation and have it fade up so to do that i'm just gonna go to the first sentence that's being spoken go into effects and presets and search for fade up words this is a standard animation preset from after effects so i'm just gonna go ahead and drag it onto our layer and if you press no eu while selecting the text layer you can see that there's two keyframes that are being created the first one is going to declare our start where our character starts speaking and as you can see it's currently at zero percent and the second one is going to declare the end where our character has fully spoken a text meaning the zero percent one is going to be at where your character has starts speaking and the hundred percent one is going to be where he finishes it which for me is approximately at this point so i'm going to go ahead and drag it till it fits now when we play our clip, we can see that the words are slowly fading up. And Gene? Now we're going to apply this to the other text layers that we have as well and always match it with where the character starts and stops speaking. This might be a bit tricky and take some time for you to master, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it because it looks great. Once this step is applied for all your text flares, you can see that your intro already improved a lot. But now at this sentence, I'm going to add a fading out so that the text doesn't just disappear. As you can see at the moment, when it hits a certain point where the layer ends, it's just disappearing. And to make this a bit smoother, I'm going to add opacity fading to make it slowly go from 100 to 0%. This is a really simple step to do. We're just going to click on to the layer press t on our keyboard to bring up the opacity property set a keyframe at where the text ends and put it to zero now go approximately let's say 10 frames before that and set the value up to 100 now as you can see when you play the clip before we go it slowly fades out instead of just disappearing now after adding an intro obviously we're also going to have to add an outro now there's loads of different variants of outros that you can add for my case i chose to put my name heading up in the signal watermark look and if you want to learn how to do that i made a full dedicated guide on that effect make sure to check it out the link to that is in the description so now at the end when we're almost done we're going to add three adjustment layers and we're going to add them below our text but above all the other clips so to now add an adjustment layer go ahead and press ctrl alt and y at the same time and we're going to do that free time for free individual adjustment layers now this is going to be the most important step of the whole edit and it's going to be adding a good color correction because as you can see adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits immensely so if you want to get for yourself a good color correction to boost the potential of your edits to the top make sure to check the first thing in the description because i'm currently still running a huge sale on my shop you can get all my presets for up to 70 percent cheaper so it's a good opportunity for beginners like you to learn how to edit for way cheaper than usual the sale is not going to be lasting forever so make sure to be 
fast and get your premium color correction now. Now, after adding a color correction, we're also going to add a flicker. So to do that, go ahead and search for S underscore flicker. Drag it onto the top adjustment layer. And I'm going to change the amplitude from 0.2 to 0.12. Also put the random frequency from 30 down to 15. Depending on what kind of edit you do, a hard flicker can be very beneficial. But in my case, it's rather a soft edit. So I'm going to go for a soft look. Next, we're going to add a slight panning, which is just overall going to smoothen out the look of our edit and add some moving to it so it doesn't look that stiff. To do that, go ahead and search for S underscore shake. Drag it onto the bottom adjustment layer. And now I'm going to put the amplitude from 1 down to 0.22, the frequency from 8 down to 3, and also enable motion blur, this little check mark. Now, once all these steps are done, there's one more thing that you want to do, which is adding RSMB. What RSMB means is basically a real smart motion blur. So it's just going to make your edit smoother. And to edit, we're going to go ahead and pre-compose all our layers together. So we're going to select the intro up till the text and press Control Shift and C at our keyboard. As before, select the bottom option and enable this check mark. Press OK. And as you can see, you have your whole edit into one layer now. And we're going to go ahead into effects and presets and search for RSMB. Choose RSMB Pro and add it onto your clip. And we're going to go ahead and change the blur amount from 0.5 up to 1 and the sensitivity also from 70 up to 100. Now, don't worry, your edit is not gone. If you double click onto this pre-composition, you can get back all the layers that you created earlier because pre-composing is just a simple way to compress all the layers into one composition. Therefore, we didn't have to add the RSMB onto every single layer and we're just able to do it with one click. Now, once this is done, this is what your final edit should look like. Eugene, we want to change before we go out. And now to export it and get it out of After Effects, we're gonna go ahead to the top and select Composition. Now under this, select Add to Render Queue and it should open this extra timeline. And from here on, go into the Output Module and change the format from AYI to QuickTime. This is just gonna increase the quality a bit. Press OK. And now the output, you can do however you want because this setting basically just changes where on your PC your edit is saved. But I would recommend you to choose a disk where you have a lot of free room because these edits are gonna take a lot of disk space from you. And if this tutorial helped you, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below telling what tutorial you want to see next also as i said if you want to get high quality presets make sure to check the first link in the description because i'm still running a huge sale and if you want to join the edit community that just has the same interest as you make sure to check the discord link in the description because we don't only have plugins we're also a huge community of editors you can ask me questions or just get in touch i'm basically on there 24 7 that's it thank you for watching and see you next time